It's Necro Nikki, and today I want to share with you some paranormal experiences that I've had. And I'm coming to you from a very vulnerable place because I know these experiences are really rare. And I created some paintings recently that have to deal with two of these experiences. I will show you them when I'm talking about each story that pertains to each art piece. Also, I wanna say thank you so much to those who have gotten my paintings who support this channel. It means a lot, because the more support I have, the more often I can make videos. And, well, let's get started. First story has to deal with me being in my room and a huge shadow skull started appearing and it looked at me and I looked at it and it got really big and then it went away and that was it. Some of these stories are going to be longer than others and some of the details I'm going to be changing just because Certain entities aren't allowed near me and I don't want to say anything related to it thinking that that means I'm welcoming it because that's not the case. And there are other stories that I won't be sharing. To me, paranormal has to deal with something more in our dimension, the physical dimension. So seeing, touching, hearing, I have frequent spiritual experiences through meditation and whatnot, feeling energies, speaking to different entities, but these rare occasions of seeing a little more and even having other people witness the same thing. So, second story, I'm at my friend's house and all of a sudden, I hear what sounded like three demons laughing, like, <laughs> and I look at my friend, and in, instead of me asking what was that, I just look at him, and he says, oh, you heard that? And I said, yeah, what was that? Oh, they're just some demons that like to mess with me. And that was the end of that conversation. So the next story has to deal with me going to a friend's house who had told me that it was haunted before. Now, I'm a skeptic, so I don't believe what everyone tells me, and I also don't disregard it. I keep myself at a balanced level. So my friend said his place was haunted, especially a particular room. And I remember just peering and kind of going in that room and kind of getting an eerie feeling, but just not really spending too much time in there to make a decision. And so we watched a scary movie. And the movie has to do with one of my favorite books, which is a, an occult book based on ancient Sumerian and Babylonian magic. And so, watch this movie, no big deal. Now, the next day, I started having some interesting experiences. I was at a guy's house, a guy friend, we'll say, and I was there alone because he had to leave, and I ended up waking up in a moment and feeling as though I could not move and but I was awake and my whole aura around me was just very frozen so it was just really alarming and then w gusts of wind started blowing around, I saw a plastic bag go in the air, some papers, very light objects, but it was super alarming because it was like wind and things being thrown around. And initially I thought that 
someone was in there. And so I got really scared, but I couldn't move. And then eventually I got myself out of that state and was able to get up and no one was there. So I remember calling my guy friend and saying, hey, I had to leave. I don't know what happened. I think it was a demon. <laughs> that's just how I went with my intuition. That's how I, that's just what I felt. I just felt like there was a bad energy and just because of the wind, it, w it was like, you know, initially I thought that someone was there, but there was wind. Like, I, like when you're somewhere super windy, like a very strong gust of wind, like someone can't create that. It was like a force of, of nature. And so then I started, you know, thinking about it more and it just, it felt like something paranormal and dark. And I just remember my friend saying like, okay. And that was really that. So then the same entity was following me home. Well, that was the first instance of that experience, but I guess it followed me there. But then I was having similar experiences at my place to where, yeah, the gusts of wind and things were um, going around and similar experience where I'd wake up and couldn't move, but I was awake and happened a few more times. Even one instance, I actually physically saw a demon. Very similar to like demon statues that you would see, like typical features, <laughs> very scary looking, um, sharp teeth, big evil eyes, claws, even felt the claws, heard breathing, it, it's, it was just weird because it's like a different kind of breathing, like even though, you know, like with the other story I was saying, it sounded like laughing, it was like very similar but so different that I've never heard a human make a sound quite like it, but it was like my best guess. Like the breathing was like, ah. Like something like that and yeah it that kept happening and then it got to a point where I was sort of dabbling into witchy stuff not too much though it was like at that point I would read a book every few months it wasn't anything serious but my roommates knew I had some sort of interest and were just the type to say don't do that kind of stuff or read that kind of stuff um, around here and so one and the reason why I even bring up the roommates was because one day I got a text ar around this time that this stuff was going on I did not tell them about this at all because I did not want to tell them and I got a text and from my roommate saying, what's going on in your room? And at first I thought I had nothing to do with that. I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, I'm getting a very bad vibe from your room. I walked by today and your door was completely closed and it completely opened all the way and then slammed shut. And I was like, whoa. So I ended up telling one of my other roommates about this and not talking to them and just telling them that whole story. And my one roommate who ended up helping me because I didn't know how to deal with this situation said, okay, I know how to handle this. And said, this is gonna sound crazy, but I've traveled to different dimensions and I know exactly what to do. So I said, okay. So we go in my room and he says, that's it. And that points to this little dream catcher. Now this was like a legit dream catcher that I had purchased a few months before, but I think it was just the connection of the, maybe it was of, cause I do believe dream catchers can be portals of that being there. And then hearing the words from that book in the movie and being at a haunted place and just 
being at the right place at the right time that it traveled through that and so my friend we did a little meditation told it to go away and took the dream catcher out and that was that oh so i know i said i was gonna hold up the painting during the story but let me show you the painting that pertains to that story so this one right here Black and orange are my favorite colors. So I wanted to put the orange in the background. So it's like, oh, pretty orange color. Like just things that we're dealing with that, you know, when there's just a lot going on or a lot to see, you get kind of distracted, but there's all sorts of things going on in front and there's a lot of motion and it's all around and if you pay attention or if you're aware then you might know exactly what's going on because there are ghosts and in my personal opinion at least um there are ghosts and demons and angels just all over and probably different entities I don't even know about, aliens, you know, these are just terms that humans give, but I really love abstract art that has only two colors to it, because I feel like there's less distraction on, like, what's going on, and, like, not too much detail, but it's really... An experience that the viewer has to peer into because uh, out of all the paintings I've done I've been doing abstract stuff recently but abstract is really difficult to do it's making like something out of nothing like it's it, and I don't want to say that this is nothing but something so simple uh, look profound or, you know, limiting the amount of color and the way that you portray that, it just, it's, I mean, it can be easy if it comes out great, but at the same time, it's really not because a lot of the paintings that I've, done our art where it's like a huge scenery like a landscape or you know like a scene of something you have so much stuff going on like I just feel as though there should be just more of an appreciation for abstract art or just have people kind of like think about it that way that wow yeah you know that is pretty epic <laughs> okay that's like my favorite painting i've done so far so this is the next one and i might as well say it with the next story or hold it during this next story so now this story has to do with a ghost and to me it's a little bit different than the demon I've had more experience with demons I feel than anything oh well and shadow people I've done I've seen like my fair share of shadow people and angels but I haven't seen any angels appear physically but that kind of makes sense actually because we're at a lower level of consciousness it's not they don't really want to physically appear i mean i think it could happen but it's just say you're at a lower level of consciousness like you're negative like it's gonna be harder for them they you have a guardian angel i believe and you know there's the archangels and there's so many different angels out there are so awesome and they just 
it's going to be a little more difficult for them to just want to communicate with you or they just have certain tasks and things that they do. So each different type of spiritual entity, I mean, that's why I, I think it's good to have a relationship with uh, a vast amount of different types because they all offer different things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah anyways ghost story so this guy I was talking to wanted to introduce me to his ghost friend and I said okay I wasn't you know too certain I, it wasn't like yes there is a ghost friend that he has to introduce me but no there isn't I was just very open to it so I said okay showed me the object that this ghost was attached to and so what happened was he introduced me and we started hanging out more I started hanging out with one of his other friends too and they were saying that they had seen signs that this ghost was trying to communicate with them and so what happened was that the ghost ended up following me to my place and I'm this is the one story that I'm really changing the details about because you'll understand why it was making a lot of different noises s or not too different, but it was making like a song and keep playing the same song over and over and over. And we'll just say it was doing it in, in a snapping kind of noise. And I kept hearing it and it, if I'd walk through my hallway, it would sound like it was up above in the hallway, but I was in my room. It kind of sounded like it was high up above in the room, but most of the time it sounded like it was like right outside my window, which is really weird. So this kept going on for like a week and I was like, having a tar hard time sleeping because it was like really loud. I'd have to put music on to just counteract the noise. I finally ended up talking to someone about it and they did not have a good reaction to it. So I didn't feel comfortable talking to anyone about it. Now, there was someone staying at my house, like on the couch, they need a place to stay. Someone who I wasn't really close with at that time, but had known them for many years and at one point in my life was very close with them. To the point where if they were hearing similar sounds to me, they would feel comfortable talking to me about it. And uh, eventually they did. Um, I did not talk to anyone there about it. And the only other person I told, there's no way they could have had contact with each other. They didn't even know of each other. That person had no idea where I lived or anything. So, uh, the person staying on my couch said, so do you hear that noise all the time too? And then I said, oh, the snapping? And he said, or no, he actually said, do you hear that snapping? I was just trying to avoid saying what the actual noise was. But he said, do you hear that snapping all the time too? And I said, you hear that? And it was just really awkward because it was a time when we weren't really like communicating much to each other. But I just remember telling him, hey, you know what? I'll, I'm going to take care of it. And just don't tell anyone else that you hear that too. And he was like, okay. And then I took care of it. And I just told it to stop and then it's not welcome i pretty much did something really similar to what my friend did the last time just saying hey you need to stop really sternly and you know having the confidence and saying like yeah this is gonna end because you're not allowed to be doing this and then it stopped after that so well, that was around i'd say three years ago and what was weird is, um, I, about two years after that, I'm going to put my painting down now. I had a friend where we would talk about paranormal stuff. Like, 
we'd feel comfortable saying like, hey, like I saw handprints on my wall yesterday or like this happened or, you know, this alien, blah, 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 blah. Like we super into it, both had a lot of experiences and we just get really excited and want to like talk to each other about this kind of stuff. Not like it happened all the time, but if something did happen, we would talk about it or like past stories. And so what happened was he had like an app on his phone, but it was like, Similar to like a spirit box. Uh, I've never had a spirit box before, but it somehow uses the, from what I understand, don't quote me on this because I don't know how it works exactly, but from what I understand, it uses like energy and frequencies in the area to where the entity can communicate to you through the spirit box and it'll say like a word and or it'll start saying like a, a few different words. And so he told me about this app that he used and that it works. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I was actually really skeptical about it just because it was like an app on the phone. I don't know. I just didn't think it would work, but technology is pretty amazing. And so what happened was he ended up telling me, oh, okay, let's try it. And then he said, what's around Nikki? Like, do you have anything to say? And all these nice words started coming up, like funny and honest, we'll just say stuff like that. And my friend was laughing. He's like, you can't be talking about Nikki. And I just, I, I, I didn't really even think that it was working. I'm like, why is it telling me like these words? Like what's going on? Like, okay. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, let me try. So I said, any spirits, ghosts, anything around that has anything to say or communicate, now is your time. What do you want to tell me? What message do you have to bring? And just like all intensely, I just like super focused on it and, you know, put my energy into it as though I 100% thought this device worked because I really wanted to see if something wanted to communicate with me. And the interesting thing is that one word came up and the word that came up was the object that that one ghost was attached to. And I had never told my friend about that story in particular actually, so he had no idea. Uh, and then interestingly enough, the next day, I had a human contact me and give me a message. It was another confirmation from the ghost and it was just really bizarre because that was legit. <laughs> So that was that story and that was really, besides very recent, the last kind of paranormal experience because now being more experienced and a frequent practitioner, I usually don't have to, uh, or I mean, I... <laughs> I cleanse my space a lot and so yeah I don't have to like deal with that kind of stuff not that it's really bad but it's kind of like I have my guard like my chakras cleanse my aura and like different protective fields and things around me you know I like certain herbs and crystals that just it kind of keeps things away and things know like no you can't just do that <laughs> Because spirits will try to, um, and entities control people or attach themselves and try to influence or put thoughts um, in objects too. So I don't allow any of that to happen. Now it was crazy and another reason why it encouraged me to do this video because I'd wanted, wanted to do it for a while but kind of like, uh... Because like I said, it's just a really vulnerable place, but I had an experience recently a few days ago, but this was different. But like I said, it has been years since I've had a, like a paranormal experience in 
our physical dimension I have like spiritual experiences all the time and so what happened was recently I started getting more serious with the Goetia the Goetia demons and I've kind of dabbled in um, into the books and communicating with them even tarot certain uh, I guess spells or you know evoking or invoking type stuff but usually it's just not been anything like the other experiences that I explained but the other day there's one demon that I found that I super vibe with like we're just like about the same thing and I feel like it's been trying to communicate with me for a while because a um, one of the animals that's associated with it I've had in a vision and it's really about a lot of what I'm about just it kind of makes sense it's it's kind of hard to explain it's it's like a similar to like a spirit animal they say if you have a spirit animal it's usually one that you see everywhere or it's just you have a lot in common or you know you you gravitate towards it, it it's kind of like that and there's a situation where that I thought I wanted to be a part of that attracted me to this demon and then ended up communicating with it and realized that the whole reason why I started to in the first place doesn't even really matter but now that I know that we have our bond that's cool but so yeah the other day I was in a similar state to some of the stories I explained before where like laying in my bed and then all of a sudden I'm awake but I can't move and I felt it grabbing my arm but I stopped it I told it to stop because I just I wasn't I didn't know what was going on like I just I wasn't expecting it thanks for hearing my stories maybe you have a story you want to share if so leave a comment I hope you're subscribed and if you would like me to do my next video about my hidden tattoos, meaning tattoos that I have that you can't see right now and just talking a lot about them, ones that I want to talk about, please like this video. Love and love. Until next time.